Hello there, it's uh, David Taylor and I'm back with another one of my video blogs. Now, as we just turned from June into July, we're just about to experience our first really hot spell of weather for the season. And it's very important to remember that when the temperature, particularly in a glass house, sort of readily stays in the high 20s or even well into the 30 degrees centigrade mark, um, your pelagoniums will, to a certain extent, switch off. In actual fact, pelagoniums go into a sort of semi-dormant stage when it gets very hot, and it's important to remember not to overwater your plants. And it's important to remember that, so when we have a very hot spell of weather, um, your plants will perhaps be beneficial in keeping them very much on the dry side, and you won't lose them. Of course, another situation to remember is to try and keep the pot or the root ball part of the plant in the pot um, as cool as possible. Perhaps if you've got a lot of upper benches where it's going to get really hot, perhaps bring your plants down off of those into a more shaded situation. Um, now, I've got a lot of shading on, so obviously it doesn't get the intense sun, uh, which is important to keep off but uh, very much keeping the plants as cool as possible and not overwatering them is a couple of key messages to note uh, with um, pelagoniums in the glass house. Now what I'm going to talk about today is um, cuttings of zonal types. Uh, so that includes um, the Stellas uh, because they're a zonal hybrid. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit today about taking cuttings of zonal types. With the other types, the regals, the angels, and the scented leaves, and those sorts of plants, um, I tend to take my cuttings of those later. Primarily because at this time of year, all those types of plants want to do is to flower. And what they do is they send a lot of shoots up that have got nothing but flower on. Here's an example of a, of a regal. Um, this is actually covered in bloom, but all of the shoots that are taking up to these blooms are not any good for cuttings at all. And there are so many of them. Um, you may find the odd stem, uh, which has got more or less a non-flowering shoot on, but it's very difficult to find them. So what will happen is, in the late summer, when the days get shorter and the days get slightly cooler, um, the plants will begin to throw a lot more proper growth, which has got non-flowering shoots on, and they're much more suitable for taking cuttings from. Zonals, on the other hand, flower and grow on the same stem, on a single stem root. So you can take basically cuttings from zonal types at any stage in the year. The only difference is, of course, if you're taking them in the cooler times, say from around about October through to about March, April, you will need to provide bottom heat, either with a, a sort of heated mat or a propagator or something along those lines. But if you're taking cuttings at this time of year, in the sort of midsummer period, um, you obviously don't need that. Now this is a plant, um, it's one of my own raisings, it's a plant that I call Gosbrook uh, Susanna, it's actually named after the wife. It is a dwarf, but I've grown this as a floribunda. The main thing to remember is that you want cuttings that are relatively short jointed, which means that there's not a lot of uh, room between each one of the uh, leaf or flower joints that runs up the bit of stem that you're going to use for the cutting. Now whilst I'm taking the cuttings, I will actually sort of be cutting the plant back uh, after its post-show period. Now there are a lot of compost mixes and pre-prepared items that you can use to put your cuttings into to grow. What I'm actually going to use for the purposes of this demonstration, I use what are known as uh, little furtis plugs. Now these are very similar um, to Jiffy 7s, but the difference is that the mix in them has actually got a peat perlite mix rather than Jiffy 7s, which is just pure peat. Now this, the, these are quite large ones, they're four centimetres sort of square, four centimetres across and four centimetres deep. And they're ideal for really all types of cuttings and I use this size for most of them. I've got a smaller size one for angel types which I'll also show you later in the season. One of the only problems with the Furtis plugs 
uh, is that you can actually only buy them wholesale. You can't get them from garden centres. You would have to go to a horticultural wholesaler to buy them. And the other issue is, you know, you would have to buy a box. So maybe if you're in a society or a club, you may be able to source them from a, a wholesaler. Um, uh, and then, you know, you can divide them up between yourselves how you wish. Uh, alternatively, you can get the Jiffy 7s, um, which are available in all garden centres. These fertis have been sprayed. I'll give them a spray to damp them down, so they're quite damp, and they're just ready to have the, uh, the cutting inserted into them straight away. Now, the alternative to that is actually using a, 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 mi a mixture of compost that you can use then in a small pot. Say nothing more than a, a sort of two and a half to three inch pot, uh, and put in a mixture of ordinary compost mixed up with about 50% uh, of sharp horticultural sand. If you're going to use a, a compost mixture um, in a small pot, you can actually just uh, stand that in a saucer after you've inserted your cutting, um, and that's ready then to soak up some moisture, uh, and you can go on from there. The key thing to remember though is just let them dry out between each watering. Um, that's, that's the thing to do. I mean, I even the Fertis plugs, or if you've got a, a, a small pot with some compost in, compost mixture in, uh, just put them in, let them soak up what they want, and then you can leave them until the top just begins to go dry before you then uh, stand them in the, in the water again just to let them soak up each time. Now the other thing with dealing with cuttings is that you need to make sure that all the tools and cutting equipment that you're going to use is very clean. Now I've actually got a brand new blade here so I know that that's very clean. Uh, but in between cutting back different plants I would actually clean that with a Jay's fluid solution.